Hey, how's it going? Good morning. You're in the neutral corner. Hey, so I just wanted to make a quick little video to give my thoughts on the fight last night. Uh, Islam Makachev versus Alexander Volkanovsky. Um, fucking tremendous fight, man. Tremendous fight. Uh, I knew it was going to be a tough fight like that. Um, but let's just be... Okay, all right. First thing I want to want to go over, first thing I want to clarify is, is that, yes, Islam won the contest. Islam won the competition inside that cage as far as, you know, uh, he landed some takedowns. He had control the whole fourth round. He had control of the back, uh, you know. But at what point are we as spectators and are we as judges going to accept a takedown as a point as points you know to get you ahead in the fight but you do nothing with it so yes he had volks back for the whole fourth round but if you really look at it volk did more damage even though they were chip shots even though they were little bitties you know basically slaps with fists you know when he's punching islam when islam has his back he still he is still the busier fighter he's still the fighter trying to end the fight trying to do something and, and islam was just holding on for position for dear life um you know islam could not take him down at will there were so many times that he'd hit a takedown and i don't know whether or not they would count but he'd hit a takedown and immediately within within three seconds volk's already fighting to get back up to turn it around to make it a better uh to make it a better a matchup on the feet. Now, Islam's stand-up looked a lot better than a lot of people thought. But even still, you know, he was one shot in it, two shot in it sometimes, and Volk's throwing combinations trying to get in. You know, of course Volkanovs is gonna eat a couple of punches. He's he was a shorter guy. Even with a longer reach, he's got four more inches to reach to that guy's face. You know? And uh but as far as as far as the winner, man, Volk won the fight. He may not have won the contest. He may not be the double champ as far as winning the contest with X's and O's. But when you when you come down to it, you know, Volk won. We'll, we'll say it this way. Makachev won the battle, but Volk won the war. Makachev did not want to be in there anymore at all. He did not. He wanted to be out of there, especially in that fifth round. And Volk was talking about how he breaks his opponents and et cetera, et cetera. I, I, do, I do believe that he was on his way to breaking Islam. I, I think he was on his way to making Islam, you know, quit. I don't think he quite got there, but you could tell after the fight. You could tell in the post-fight interviews and the pictures they're taking with their coaches um islam has to have their help standing up he's exhausted i mean he was knocked loopy by that right hand volk landed in the fifth round he was knocked loopy by some of the follow-up shots that volk landed it was just a little too late for volkanovsky but i just uh you know it's just one of those things like truthfully i think volk should have gotten the nod simply out of emotion and that and that's the thing that's the thing about fighting fighting is so multi-layered fighting there's so much that goes into fighting um technique you know things like that but also emotion fighting is a very emotional game and that's why people get so separated and that's why people get so divided on who wins and who loses and you know the results of the contests because people don't just watch it for the x's and the o's which that's how the judges are watching it and that's how the judges are scoring it x's and o's how many takedowns how many jabs how many kicks were landed what do they do with them that's what they count they don't count about the the emotion behind the fact that volk was supposed to be taken down one time completely demolished choked out and we were going to have a new champion in one or a defend a new pound for pound in one round but he didn't do that anytime he took volk down volk got back up the few times that he didn't honestly i think volk was just uh that he shot himself in his own foot i think he could have gotten up 
I think uh, he was trying to conserve a little bit of energy uh, in some of those bad positions in which he probably should have used all his energy to get up, but he didn't. Um, and, uh, you know, he has no one to blame but himself for those, you know, you can't, no matter what, no matter if the guy is doing damage or not, you cannot lay with someone having your back like that for three whole minutes and expect you not to lose that round. And he definitely lost the second and he definitely lost the fourth. <coughs> he definitely won the fifth and he definitely won the third. To me, the toss up is the first the first round and the first round I had to give to Islam when we're talking about X's and O's simply because they both scored stumbles, knockdowns, whatever you want to call them. And then Islam landed a takedown at the end of the round and was on top of Volk. So he wins the first, the second round, he takes him down. He controlled him a little bit. I had to give him the second round, third round, all Volk. I thought, Oh man, Volkanovsky's, you know, He's he's gonna he's gonna go now and now we're at third round. He's gonna he's gonna take off and Islam's gonna get tired. But you know Islam did get tired, but he he pushed that pace and he kept it going. He did he did a lot of things that that are very very good. And you know, damn I you know I I feel bad for Volk. I wish he'd won. But now here's my other thing. Earlier in the night. Yair Rodriguez beats Josh Emmett with a triangle choke. And Yair is an explosive, um, unorthodox fighter, an unorthodox striker. Um, he'll just as soon throw a jumping roundhouse kick as a jab. And those guys are dangerous because in a traditional sense, you're always taught, let's set your punches up, let's set your kicks up, let's set your takedowns up. But uh, this guy doesn't set anything up. I mean, he does. Don't get me wrong. I don't, I'm not meaning that insultingly. Um, I'm meaning it as, um, as almost like, like like a compliment. You know, I mean it in the sense of like he doesn't have to set anything up. The guy is so sneaky, so fast, and he brings these techniques, these knees, these elbows, these these punches, these kicks. Um, he brings them right under the radar up until it's on you. You know, um, he he's he's very much like a stealth bomber. And uh, it's very funny. You don't you don't know he's there until he is. So here's my worry, though. I'm watching the post fight press conference, and uh, Volk is all amped up as anybody would be. Just antsy. You can tell he's he's being eaten up with the uh, with the fact that he lost. He's being eaten up with the fact that he's not the double champ. And everybody's asking him, you know, about Yair, and he. I love Volkanovski favorite fighter but he was putting Yair on the back burner kind of he kept talking about a rematch for the lightweight championship and he kept talking about getting back there and fighting Islam again and he kept talking about the things that he knew okay Volk I'm gonna give you a week dude but after that you got to stop that nonsense and you got to focus on Yair who is a dangerous contender and who is thinking about no one but you right now you're thinking about him. You're thinking about Islam. No, no, no. You need to be thinking about Yair Rodriguez. Because, Volk, if you do not, if you are looking past him and you're looking for Islam, I honestly think that you're going to have a really rude awakening with Yair. He's sneaky. He's fast. He can catch you with something crazy. Because he's not like Islam who's just throwing punches down the middle. You know, this guy's going to be slinging baseball bats at the end of his knees. You know what I mean? Those little those little shin bones, those are, those are baseball bats he's slinging at your head over and over and over, spamming it like a video game character. Yair Rodriguez is like a video game character. He's like someone controlling him on UFC 4, and they're just spamming the spinning stuff. They're spamming the roundhouses. And you know what? I've played those guys online. That shit's hard. That shit's hard to defend. You know, those guys are just throwing power shot after power shot after power shot. <coughs> Excuse me. And 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 win. So, I think that Yair versus Volk is going to be an excellent fight. I think Volk takes him down and controls him. But, if Volkanovski doesn't get his head right and he doesn't focus on Yair, then Yair will win. If, if Volk can't let go 
temporarily of this sting of Islam doing his thing, then you know, I think I think Yair wins. Other than that, the card was great. There were some really good fights, some good finishes. The crowd was fun to watch. It was fun to hear how into it that those people were. And um, it's always so much fun to see crowds from other countries. You know, we get so so used to seeing all these crowds uh, here in, in the U.S. And, you know, us Americans aren't the best crowds. You know, we, we're a little harsh or whatever. But over there in Sydney, man, they were... They loved everybody except for the people they didn't, of course. Um, but, you know, it was a, that was a great card. I'm really excited for John Jones and Cyril Gaon next month. Um, you know, that's an exciting matchup. I think Cyril Gaon um, is basically already was like the heavyweight John Jones as far as movement and the way that he kicks and things like that. I do think his punches are a little better. But um, I'm with John Jones, of course. Uh, John Jones is an OG. And uh, I think that he's going to be the one to get it. And uh, But who knows, man. I was rooting for Volk and I was wrong. You know, I might be the new Chell Sonnen when it comes to predictions at the, at the major league level. So, um, yeah, you know, I'm going to leave it with you guys at this for now. There's no new local news that I know of other than um, uh, a few more fights have been signed uh, for the undercard. For the the game red boxing show with uh, Roy Jones Jr. and Anthony Pettis as the main event, um, I do believe a couple of those have been signed, but I will wait until a little bit more on that develops and I can get a little bit more information, um, and maybe later this week. Like I said, my plan is to do once a week episodes, but for cases like this where you know I want to kind of put it out there and put my opinion out there uh, before everybody else does. Oh, the last thing I did want to say, and I'm glad I remembered it before I ended the video about Volk, is yes, Volk lost that world uh, lightweight championship fight. Can we, can we go ahead and just give the, let him keep the, let's just let him keep the pound for pound status because he went up in there up in, up a weight class, brought it to the lightweight champion, brought it to him, had him at the brink of defeat. At no point was Volk almost defeated. At no point was Volk undetermined. At no point was Volkanovski ever second-guessing himself as far as can I win this, can I do this. He may have second-guessed a couple of techniques and not done them when he should have. But as I said, you know, Volk lost the title fight, but Makachev did not prove to me that he was number one pound for pound. Um, he proved to me that he can eke out a decision in a fight uh, but he can still lose the fight. You look at his face afterwards. You look at his demeanor afterwards. Immediately, as soon as he gets the mic, he starts making excuses. And he knows he lost. You know, now, he may not have lost the contest, but he knows he lost the fight. Can we all agree? Can we all agree? I'm not going to say that Islam doesn't deserve to be the lightweight champ, but he does not deserve to be pound for pound number one. Pound for pound number one is Volkanovski. Yeah, he moved up in weight. Yeah, he lost. But he brought the fight, and he won the fight. That's the difference. That's the difference to me. So, um, hey, thank you guys. Another quick video. I really appreciate you guys, your support. Hey, man, I had an amazing, um, amazing outpour of, uh, of support from people for my first episode. So I'm super excited, and I really appreciate you guys listening. I had a lot of listeners, way more than I expected, way more interaction than I expected. So... I really do appreciate you guys, and I really do appreciate you uh, coming on this journey with me. And uh, you know what, guys? Thank you. Um, this has been In the Neutral Corner with RJ Summerlin. Godspeed.